Welcome to McDonald's. May I have your order? Hey, yeah, uh, I'll take one McRib sandwich. I'm sorry, the McRib is not currently available. All right, it's back for a little bit of time. Wow, that is um, that's some good timing on my part, huh? All right, so uh, I'll take one McRib and a small... Oh, I'm sorry, you took too long. It's It's gone again. What? Oh, it's back. No, it's gone. Back. Gone. Back. Ooh, still back. Gone forever. Psych, now it's back forever. Just kidding. It's It's gone. I mean, back. It's gone. It's back. Uh, hello? 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 <sighs> He's gone forever. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that's always there for you, unlike the McRib. Yeah, it's about that time, friends. Everyone's favorite barbecue flavored sandwich with a boneless, restructured pork patty pressed into the shape of a miniature rack of ribs is back again. Nope, you're not experiencing deja vu. The McRib's been appearing and disappearing from the McDonald's US menu on a regular basis for over 30 years. It's basically a tradition at this point. Now, personally, I believe that there are two types of people in this world those who are happy to see the McRib return, and those with taste buds. Now, obviously, I'm just joking. Let's be honest, I eat a lot of fast food. McRib, not really one of my favorites, but I totally understand why there are plenty of fans of the sandwich. And every time the McRib returns, they celebrate all across social media. As McDonald's senior archives manager Mike Bullington puts it, quote, there's no denying that the McRib is one of the most iconic sandwiches of the last four decades. And we have thousands of emails and tweets from fans to prove it. This all makes me wonder, if the McRib actually is as beloved as they say, then why isn't the sandwich widely available year Round. Does McDonald's prefer to only make its customers happy some of the time? Does the restaurant only like making money some of the time? It's not as though the sandwich is themed around any sort of holiday or time of year, so what is McDonald's angle with this thing? Is this a case where the restaurant is reluctantly giving the fans what they want even though the sandwich doesn't make it much money? Or does the sandwich actually make the restaurant a lot of money and McDonald's is cleverly tricking its customers into gobbling up a very inexpensive meat patty? A bunch of theories have sprung up about the old McRib over the years. More theories than any non-permanent fast food menu item should have, probably. And so today, I, Matt Pat, will take the occasion to review those theories, yo. That's right, friends. It's a McMorty. Leave your theories in the comments below. I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty. So, the first theory about the McRib, and the one that I've heard regurgitated the most over the years, is that McDonald's brings the McRib back whenever pork prices drop, and this allows them to make a higher profit margin on the sandwich. And when we look at the chart of lean hog prices over the past couple of decades, the big nationwide and international McRib rollouts do seem to coincide with dips in pork price. But would this be intentional or coincidental? Is there any way that McDonald's could reliably predict a downward swing in the price of pork months ahead of time? Because take it from me, the guy who just rolled out an entire line of theory wear merch for the holidays, it takes a lot of effort and planning to get a product rolled out. How would McDonald's know months ahead of time that pork prices are gonna drop? This year, for instance, we know for a fact that McDonald's had November 1st nailed down as the McRib's return date about three months in advance. If McDonald's does have a way of predicting the price action of pork, they're able to see it way ahead of time. So let's pull that chart back up and see if there are any patterns. Hmm, not seeing anything in the one-year charts. What about five years? Ten years? Sure enough, the further out we pull, the clearer the trend becomes. The price of pork is cyclical, and it almost always spikes in late spring and takes a nosedive in late fall or early winter. And once you know it, McDonald's generally brings the McRib back in October or November, just like they did this year on November 1st. So to me, this means it has to be an intentional choice on McDonald's part, because despite what they would have you believe, there's no other reason why quote-unquote McRib season should be in late autumn. I mean, come on! The McRib was intended to capture the essence and flavors of South Carolina Carolina pulled pork barbecue. Yep, I was surprised by that fact. It doesn't taste anything like that. But anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm happy to eat barbecue any time of the year. But you cannot tell me that summer isn't barbecue season, McDonald's. You're not gaslighting me like that. So McDonald's is trying to make the McRib in cold weather months because pork generally costs less during that time of year, which, gotta admit, was a bit surprising to me because all the big ham holidays, like Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving, all happen during the half of the year when 
prices are generally lower, but why would the price of lean hogs go down during the months when pig meat is on the menu in such a major way? That seems to, like, defy supply and demand, doesn't it? Well, to understand this phenomenon, we need to discuss pig cuts for a moment. Ham comes from the upper leg of the pig and is then cured. Thanks to a lot of holiday traditions, ham is in high demand during the cold winter months. All the rest of the pig, though, not so much, but it's not as though only a fraction of the pig can be slaughtered at once. So basically, in order to keep up with the demand for holiday ham, a lot of pigs start getting butchered in the fall. The ham cuts get sold immediately, but the rest of the pig that isn't as high in demand generally migrates into cold storage during these months, where it stays frozen until interest in non-ham pork cuts pick up again. And wouldn't you know it, the McRibs pork patties are made entirely from these other non-ham pork cuts. According to McDonald's, the McRib patty is primarily shoulder meat. Uh, yeah, sorry to break it to you, the McRib isn't actually the meat from the ribs of the pig. But what was McDonald's supposed to do? Call it the McShoulder? They can't. Because I copyrighted the McShoulder a long time ago for when I finally make it into the WWE. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this theory as certified true, but with a small caveat. McDonald's isn't reacting to the price of pork, they're actually predicting price dips based on well-established cyclical price patterns. So here's a hot tip, if you're a fan of the McRib and want to know when it's gonna be available next, you don't have to rely on the McRib locator, you just pull up some historic pork price charts and you should have your answer months ahead of time. But you see, that doesn't tell us the whole story. There's more going on here, but to understand why, we have to look at the next theory. This one says that the McRib is a loss leader. Now, loss leading is a strategy where a product gets sold at a low price that's not profitable, with the hope that it entices customers to buy other products that are profitable. A well-known example of a loss leader is Costco's rotisserie chicken, which is used to increase foot traffic and draw customers deeper into the store. While the company's actual losses from rotisserie chicken are unknown, Costco's CFO has stated that they're willing to lose 30 to 40 million dollars per year in order to keep that chicken at its low price of $4.99. It is that effective at getting people to spend money in the store. So the theory here is that the McRib isn't actually a permanent item on McDonald's menu because it actually costs more to produce than its menu price. However, by bringing it back once every year or so, McDonald's is able to reinvigorate a wave of customers to purchase other higher margin items like french fries and fountain drinks. See also our episode on fast food soft drinks where we talked about the markup on sodas being north of a thousand percent. Now it makes a lot of sense why people believe the McRib is a loss leader. In my area, the McRib costs 12% less than a Big Mac, but it has 57% more meat on the sandwich by weight. The fact of the matter though is that we're not going to be able to confirm whether or not the McRib is a loss leader. In order to know that, we'd need to know the cost of everything that goes into the McRib. The cost of the ingredients, the cost of producing and shipping the sandwich components to restaurants, the cost of labor to assemble the sandwich, the cost of marketing the McRib to consumers, and none of that info is available to us. McDonald's alone knows the truth, but that doesn't mean that we can't still run some back-of-the-napkin math on it based on what we do know and see what we learn. According to the USDA, the current retail price for ground beef, which is used in McDonald's hamburger patties, is $4.719 per pound here in the United States. Boneless chicken breasts, which are used in McDonald's chicken sandwiches, is $3.5 $3.589. Other pork cuts, which comprise the McRib patty, are going for $3.565 per pound. After weighing patties from several top-selling McDonald's sandwiches, and after accounting for the fact that the meat and poultry experience a 25% loss of mass when cooked, I determined that the meat on a Big Mac retails for 87.8 cents, which is 18% of the burger's retail price here in Raleigh. The chicken breast on the crispy chicken sandwich retails for 56.7 cents, accounting for 15% of that sandwich's overall price. Meanwhile, the meat in the truly massive McRib patty retails for just over $1.04, a whopping 24.3% of the McRib sticker price. Now that alone isn't enough info to say with certainty that McDonald's is losing money every time they sell a McRib, but it sure seems like their profit margin is slimmer than with most sandwiches. And that's not even taking into account the fact that the McRib is a very inefficient sandwich for the restaurant. It requires a special press griddle to prepare it and give it its rib-like shape. Its elongated bun isn't used on other sandwiches like the Big Max buns are. Even the onions on the McRib are different than the diced onions that are served with the burgers. So yeah, it's not exactly the level of efficiency that the McDonald's brothers sought to achieve with their speedy service system back in the day. In the end, I'm gonna stamp this theory as certified plausible. If McDonald's would like to open up its books and remove all doubt, they know where to find me, but yeah, all the evidence again points to this being a loss leader. Which brings us finally to the third theory as to why the McRib's availability is so hit or miss. The McRib isn't actually popular. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> oh man, can't believe I just said that one out loud. The hashtag McRib groupies are probably out there coming for me. Assuming that they're real and not some bot accounts run by McDonald's, that is. See, there's good reason to believe that the McRib doesn't have staying power as a permanent menu item. McDonald's has already tried it on the permanent menu and it failed. That's right, when McDonald's began testing the McRib in 1981, it wasn't a seasonal cold weather sandwich. There was no McRib season. It was introduced because there was a chicken shortage and McDonald's needed another meat on the menu to help smooth over any chicken nugget shortages that might arise. McDonald's began testing the McRib at more and more US restaurants over the next several years. The company claimed that it was confident that the McRib would make it, only to pull the plug on the sandwich in 1985. So it would seem that the public's just not that into you, McRib. You had your shot at becoming the next Chicken McNugget, but you just couldn't kill the king. End of story, right? Wrong. McDonald's then brought the McRib back a decade later and the sandwich made it until 2005 with recurring availability. But by November, they'd announced the McRib farewell tour and the McRib was on life support yet again. Did it die? No. A petition to save the McRib made the rounds and the sandwich was brought back for another farewell tour in 2006. Yet another another farewell tour in 2007. And uh, since then, the annual return of the McRib has been more or less persistent to this very day. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, so a grassroots petition from the fans saved the McRib. That means that it actually is popular then, right? Ha ha ha, not so fast, young theorist, because that petition was just part of McDonald's marketing campaign. The petition was literally a joke. It was sponsored by the fictitious Boneless Pig Farmers Association of America, and it was hosted on McRib.com, a website that was registered to McDonald's. So, you see what happened here, right? In the 80s, McDonald's saw that the McRib couldn't cut it as a permanent menu item. In the 90s, they saw it might be able to scrape by if it was offered on and off, but in the 2000s, they really hit pay dirt when they got their customers whipped into a frenzy. It was a petition back then. Today, it's a social media campaign. The McRib hashtag, the McRib season branding, it all helps get the customers excited and in the door for a sandwich that they then very, very quickly lose interest in. As one McDonald's franchise owner explains, it plays out the exact same way every year, quote, first few weeks we sell nearly 200 per day, and near the end we may sell less than 50 per day. These quantities do not justify its placement as a core menu item. So, what's the deal with the McRib's weirdly limited availability? Well, it excites me to no end to say this, but it appears multiple conspiracy theories about it are true and are working in tandem with each other. Based on the fact that it failed its audition as a core menu item straight out of the gate, it's clear that the sandwich was never a clear-cut winner for the restaurant, even today when it's priced aggressively low. And yet McDonald's has shrewdly weaved gold out of this whole situation. They realize that they could make a winner out of the McRib by hyping it up whenever pork prices predictably dipped. The result? Customers clamoring to buy a barbecue-inspired sandwich nowhere, and I do mean nowhere, near barbecue season. But hey, that's just a theory. And this is me thanking the sponsor of today's episode, Raycon. Friends, I am a traveling YouTuber. I take my reconstructed pork patties on the go. I take my business calls on the go. I review edits of food theory episodes on the go. And that's what makes Raycon's wireless earbuds so great for someone like me. Nothing is worse than an earbud that won't stay put. But I gotta say, these new everyday earbuds do not budge, no matter what sort of crazy antics I'm getting up to. Plus, they start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound every bit as good. So you know Santa Pad is gonna be stuffing some stockings with Raycon everyday earbuds this year. I mean, just look at all the stylish colors they come in. And with free shipping and returns, giving the gift of Raycon is easier than ever. Click the link down in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash food theory and then use the code HOLIDAY, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, to get 15% off site-wide. If you know someone who's looking for a quality audio experience this holiday season, you cannot go wrong with gifting them some Raycons. Looks like you're out of excuses, friends. A huge thank you to Raycon for supporting this channel, and a final reminder to you that it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appétit.